So imagine uh, a young woman, she's just given birth and then she, she needs to make the decision. Is she, is she going to have her baby modified? Is she going to turn that baby into a, a cyborg? This grain of sand, in a sense, that's been nanotech is uh, inserted into the human brain, that baby's brain, and it integrates itself into the brain. So that baby, in effect, is no longer human. That woman, in a sense, has killed her baby, killed her baby, killed her baby, killed, in a sense, the baby's no longer human. It's effectively an artelect. It's an artelect in human disguise. end of the discussion, the swine flu was mentioned, and a lady got up and declared the following. This is what this lady said. A friend of hers works for a pharmaceutical company in Vienna, and told her that the swine flu injection needles indeed contain nat nanoparticles in, their very, in the very tip of the needle, which cannot be detected with the naked eye, but are clearly visible with as little as a 12 times magnifying microscope, like a children's toy microscope. The staff of the pharmaceutical company was advised that these nanoparticles work in the human body like a motherboard in the computer and lots of data can be stored on it. The lady further disclosed that she was working in the medical field. She had asked the lawyers who came to her as a patient how it was possible to avoid being chipped. He told her that he was aware of the planned chipping of the population and in fact most upper class members of society were aware of this plan. If you look at things historically, every brick fits into place. And uh, from uh, the prime mover, I don't even care who it might be, but the result of wanting to control and dominate, that's pretty much the, uh, the universal. And you look over the last couple hundred years, and boy, we're marching down that road. Now, Alan, what's interesting about that is also from time immemorial, even though people might want to be led or guided by a greater power, uh, you know, governmentally or otherwise, the, the desire for individuality is, is certainly a pressing desire in human nature. People are not willingly going to embrace this, even with a level of fear. Mm -hmm. so yes. now, when you're talking about things like chips that stop individuality, I don't care how afraid somebody is, yeah. they're not going to willingly say, yeah, hand me one of those. That's right. You'd have to have incredible chaos or starvation even. Um, or else many years of a build-up to it. Uh, Albert Pike said himself, we never begin a premature revolution. We lay out the groundwork of years now ahead right. to prepare the minds of the people. Well, it, the, the Loyola University meeting, uh, these guys never mentioned politics. They, they, they weren't giving out a wish list uh, that would be put through by politics. They worked for the real bosses of the world. And he said that um, this will be a positive thing and taught to be a positive thing from kindergarten. Uh, he said through novels, through cartoons, uh, movies, etc. It's a, it's a positive thing to, to advance towards. And sure enough, after that meeting, out comes the first Robin Williams movie with the, a movie called The Cutter. iTech introduces the ninth generation of an entirely organic scientific breakthrough. The Zoe implant. What there you are. There's the chip in the brain, and it's a kind of a nice thing. You can you can have a deceased family member's chip removed, downloaded, and see through his eyes as he grew up, etc. All that you see with your eyes, and all that you hear with your ears, will be preserved so that it can be experienced by loved ones you leave behind. And now they've got it in cartoons for the children where they'll be superheroes and have all these special powers. And in other words, they're going to give you a virtual reality. That's how they're going to sell it to the public. Some scientists predict that in the future we'll have a memory chip. We'll be able to file away and store memories and vastly improve our memory. Maybe one day we'll have a vision chip which could help victims of strokes and accidents. And some scientists predict 
that one day we could even have a thinking ship. A thinking ship. A thinking ship. A thinking ship. He says, but the next step was this active chip, which they've tested out for many years. Implanted. Implanted in the brain. In the brain? In the brain. Just like the Matrix movie, you know. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. Born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Merging our minds with machines may sound like science fiction, but it's already happening. Much of what we've considered science fiction and fantasy is in fact true. And then when people realize that, now we get a different situation. In, in the late 1800s, um, the Rothschilds created a foundation in England to, to encourage authors to write about certain topics which the Rothschilds defined. So they were trying to start off science fiction writers. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, Travis Scott later gave the term to this process where, where you read novels, now it's watching movies, but then it was novels aimed at the young, uh, to make the, the, those young people excited about this, this imaginative future that could be brought forth. And Travis Scott calls it predictive programming. Programming, there you go. So, so that's what all fiction really has been for uh, from then on, at least, and maybe even before was frightening as hell just just to read that i mean we're mm -hmm. we're barely prepared for microchips in the uh in the arm and mm -hmm. don't want it yeah but, uh, in terms of in the brain mm -hmm. that's that's so beyond chilling uh -huh. that it's almost incomprehensible that mm -hmm. it would get there without massive outcry mm -hmm. now it, it almost seems like the generation that is here now you and i We've got to be off the planet before they can pull that off. We would love that, and, and that's the way it was worded in this 600-page uh, the documentation that came out, which I have. <laughs> I got someone to go into the university's website and get it all before they took it down. Wow. And and the guy from Tokyo that helped us, uh, to design this latest model, because they've tried it over since the 1960s on unsuspecting victims, um, it, it has a coating on it which literally... Um, interfaces with your genetic material so you can't simply cut it out right and it also interfaces in such a way that it attaches itself to, to the cortex the, the little neurons in your brain and you they, they said this will be the end of individuality as we know it says once this is, the guy's words were from Tokyo he said he said when this is working and everyone has it he said There'll be no more individuality and no ability for, for the person to even perceive of themselves as a distinct, separate individual. He said, think of it more like the beehive. And that the beehive has, for thousands of years, has been high, the high occultic symbol of the perfect system. He said, you'll hear people's whispers uh, of their thoughts going through your mind back to the central computers and, and from the computers back to the people, a constant buzz in your head of thoughts. He says, but it will be impossible for a person to even begin to think of themselves as a distinct, separate entity.